Now the Bible says, and the angel of God spoke to me in a dream saying, this is Jacob speaking, Say, Jacob, and I answered and said, here I am. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are rings streaked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. Then he said, I am the God of Bethel, very important, where thou anointest the pillar and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Then the angel went on to say, Now arise, get thee out of the, this land, and return to the land of your kindred. If you can pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. We worship you, Lord, because you are God. We bless you because you are our king and you are our Lord. This afternoon, Lord, we've come to listen to your word. We sit under your feet, Lord, to be instructed. Lord, we pray that you shall encourage us. If there be any of us, Lord, who needs you this afternoon, we pray that through the word that shall come forth, Lord, that you shall reach such a person. I pray for those who are sick that they shall receive their healing. My Father and my God, I pray for the vessel that you are using this afternoon to bring forth your word. Lord, I pray that you shall anoint him. Lord, that you shall cover him even as he speaks your word, Lord. He shall speak that the very word that you want him to speak. Lord, we worship you, we exalt you in Jesus' name and receive your word. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Right, you may be seated. So, church, I choose this afternoon to continue from where I stopped last Sunday. And uh, feel very much welcome. We have a few things and a few people will be praying for at the end of the service. So if you don't mind, just sit back and let the word of God come to you for the next few minutes and uh, you will be blessed. Are you ready for the word of God? Last Sunday, we ended where Laban has now received Jacob, and Laban has been served by Jacob for, I guess it must have been 16 years. 16 good years. The man has received the ministry of Jacob. And uh, Laban, Jacob, is about to leave Laban. And he's turning to himself, and he's saying, he te he's telling Laban that uh, now it is my time to, to begin providing for my family. As you all know, the first seven years he served for Rachel. I mean for Leah. The second seven years he has served for Rachel. Will you forgive me if I don't recap? Is that okay? Alright. And then, that's 14 years. And Rachel has now been married. And of course you can't get married today and you have a baby. He has given birth to a young man called Joseph. I want to believe that is after one year. So he has served effectively for 15 years. After the birth of Joseph, Rachel and Leah turn to him and they say, when will you provide for us? Well, that, that is not in the Bible, but I believe the words of Jacob to Laban must have come from the family. So he comes to Jacob and Laban and he tells him, I have served you for all these years and now, when will I ever provide for my family? So he says, allow me now to provide for my family. Allow me to go back from, to the land where I came from. So Laban Having by experience no, seen and learned that the prosperity that he has and the blessings that he has were because of the favor that was upon Jacob, because our subject is favor. He turns to him and he tells him, I have known by experience. In other words, I have used divination and I've come to discover all what I have has been given to me because of you. So he tells Jacob, now choose your wages. Tell me what can I pay you for the service that you have given to me. That's where we ended. He chooses, he says, every lamb and every cow and every sheep, every goat that you will, that has stripes on it, or it, the word that we are, we are using, the Bible uses these words, some of you may not understand this, ring streaked, in other words, has some stripes on it, or spotted, he says, all that have those kind of spottings on them, he says, all those will be mine, that's my wage. And anything that is plain, pure, I will leave it to you. That is the deal that they entered in. Because the man says, you choose, tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. So he decided he'll pick the ones that were spotted, the ones that were ring streaked, and the ones that actually had colors in them. Unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, that very day, Laban goes into the flock. And he picks all those flocks that had those characteristics, and he gives them to his own sons, then he, they, he asked them to travel three 
day's journey to go and hide them away from Jacob. To make, to make a, uh, to signify that Laban was one man that was a complete cheat. He was a liar. In fact, the Bible says ten times he actually lied and stole from Jacob. So Jacob wakes up in the morning and he realizes he has nothing. Actually, what he has is purely a new stock of, uh, of, 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 of a flock that did not have any of those things that he had demanded to become his. Then Laban tells him, now you can start from here and begin to serve me. Now, I was just thinking about that. That's where we ended last Sunday. To signify to us and re to, to, to teach us as believers that our favor does not come from man. It doesn't come from man. God only uses men to extend his favor to us. So when you see the Bible saying you will find favor in the sight of God and men, it's simply that God will release his favor and he will use men to give us that favor. I don't know if you're getting what I'm talking about. Because there is nothing that man has that can actually satisfy you. Nothing. There is nothing that a human being can give to you that can be able to satisfy what you are looking for in life. So God wanted to teach uh, Jacob one very good lesson. That Jacob, I am the God who was with you from the time when you left your brothers and sisters. The God whom is describing here the God of Bethel. When you go to Bethel and you had nothing. When you arrived there with only a little oil in your hands. And I came down to manifest, to, to manifest myself to you. And I, you, I opened the heavens and you saw my angels descending and ascending. And I stood on that place in heaven and I made a pronouncement. I said, Jacob, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of, Je I mean, the God of uh, your fathers. And I promise you I will be with you wherever you are going. And I told you I will keep you, I will bless you, and I will return you to this place where you are at Bethel. Now you stood up on that particular time and you told me, if you will take me there and take care of me, if you will take me there and feed me, if you will take me there and clothe me, if you will take me there and keep me until you bring me back here, then I will know you, are, you will be my God. And I will give a tenth of everything you give me to you. Now, God wanted to remind him, it is not Laban, actually, who is supposed to bless you. It is me who is supposed to bless you. I don't know that you're getting what I'm talking about. Because there are moments when we begin to think that men can actually favor us. Yes, they will. They can only do, them, do that with the permission from God. There are moments when we think that uh, it is because of what I have done that I can enjoy the favors which I'm enjoying. For sure, this man had served Laban for those 15 years, and uh, whatever Laban was to give him on that day would have been basically part of his efforts. Now, God wanted to show him it is not your efforts that have given me what you have. To signify to us that church, everything that we own in this life doesn't belong to us. It all belongs to God. So he had to take that away from him for this young man to begin on a new slate. And this is the reason why this morning or this afternoon, I want to share with you three things that favor will do to a man to give him what we are calling as good success. What favor will do for you to give you good success? I have three factors, but today I will speak and dwell on only one of those three. God willing, when I'll stand here again, I will continue with the other second factor and probably the third factor. But the first factor which I see here, and please write down, it is this. Favor always provides you with the supernatural wisdom to make good success. That's what I'm calling my sermon here today. I mean, my, that point here today. Favor provides you supernatural. And the word here, the word is supernatural. Please don't confuse anything. It is supernatural. Natural. The word supernatural comes from two words, super and natural. The Indian teachers used to tell us they would repeat the same word in their definition. They would say supernatural is simply supernatural. And we would laugh. So favor here is given to you. God gives you favor to provide you with supernatural wisdom for you to be able to make good success. And what do I mean by supernatural wisdom? Supernatural wisdom is basically anything that is not ordinary. Anything that is not normal, okay? Anything that no man can be able to do in his own abilities. If it is the education we have, that is not supernatural. It isn't. If it is the, 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 the things that we own in life, those are not supernatural. But God will supersede, if he wants to favor you, he'll supersede the, the natural. And go beyond what the natural can be able to do for you. When you look at a situation in your life, you realize that in the natural, nothing can ever happen that can be able to sort the situation that you are in. 
the environment may be very hostile. This morning, somebody made a, a comment. He said, even in this country, when we look at the life in this country, it's so hard that you ask yourself, can I really make it? My good news for you is that the favor of God will provide a supernatural way for you to, ma to ma maneuver over those situations that you are faced with in your life. And if you believe that, you can say amen. amen. So what did God do? He began to provide what I'm calling here good success to Jacob. I'm imagining Jacob wakes up in the morning and he sees a fleet or a flock that is all pure white. And yet yesterday he had looked at the flock and he had chosen that which he thought was so good for him. Because if I'm, I'm Jacob and I'm given that opportunity to make a decision, I believe Jacob must have chosen what was probably, probably the, the flock, the one that was ring strict, the one that was spotted, could have been the bigger flock that was in the middle, I mean it would have been the bigger portion. But when you wake up in the morning, nothing is there. And yet, you, you have now to begin now to serve this man for the next few years for you to be able now to raise something which you can be able to bless your family with. Now, the scripture we read, where the angel is telling him, now arise. This scripture was a, as a result of five years of Jacob's labor. After that, it's when the angel came to him and he told him, now open your eyes and see. Look into this congregation or look into this flock and see that all what you have is ring strict, is spotted, has colors in it. Then the angel says, now arise. In other words, after these five years of service, I have now provided for you enough for you now to arise and go back to the place of Bethel. The place where you made a promise, where you made a vow, where you, you told me if I will keep you. I have now kept you. I have now given to you. I have now equipped you. You can now go back to that place. And church, I want you to know something. God will never allow you to go empty-handed. Let me repeat again. You know, some of us, we have served people. And when we serve people, we don't see anything out of the service that we are giving to people. Sometimes you even wonder, why am I serving this fellow? Because literally everything, everything you are doing for him, he seems to be taking it away from you. I know all of us, a number of us here, we don't own anything. If there's anything you own, eh, ask your friend, what do you own? They won't tell you anything. But yet every morning we wake up and we are struggling. Every morning we are doing all what we can. We are doing our best. But there's nothing. But here is the good news. God, his favor, will open doors for you. It will open doors for you. So Jacob, God provided supernatural wisdom for him to do that which was not natural. That's my point. He got a supernatural wisdom. And that's what I'm asking God to give us this morning. That each one of us, the Lord will give us the wisdom which cannot be found anywhere. Maybe in that company, the, a situation will arise where they will need you. And when you walk in that situation, you will provide a solution. And somebody will say, how much can I give to you? He provided a supernatural way of this man providing for himself. And what was that? Look at Genesis chapter 30, verse 37 to verse 40. Genesis 30, 37 to 40. And see... What happened to Jacob there? Now, amazingly, many men in the Bible, as we look at that scripture, that you know in, in the Bible, have never gotten good success through natural means. Because when you do it in natural means, you will glorify yourself. Believe me, and you will see it in the Bible. No man in the Bible, including Abraham himself, never became wealthy through natural means. I'm not trying to tell you you don't go to school, you don't work, you don't do anything. Even as you go to school, you must stretch your faith beyond the natural. How many people are, have gotten what you have? How many people have the degrees that you have? How many people have their skills that you have? How many people are, come from families that you come from? But yet when you look at yourself or you look at them, you see something which is not normal about them. It only takes the favor of God. To reach out to you and move you from the level of the ordinary to the level of the superordinary. And this is exactly what happened to this man. The man came up with something that was extraordinary. Something which was not normal. And I pray today God will give you abnormal wisdom. <laughs> abnormal wisdom. Where God will begin to give you ideas that no man can have. He'll begin to show you paths that nobody has walked on. He'll begin to show you... Processes that nobody has gone through. So that through those processes, he will give you good success. It says, and Jacob took him rods of green poplar. Poplar was a plant. And the nazel and hazel and chestnut tree. 
and he peeled white streaks in them and made the white appear which was in the roads. I think this is King James Version. I think some of you don't understand King James. Even me, sometimes I don't understand it. So can you kindly put it in the basic English version? Probably NEV or something which my good friend can, list, can, can look at. He says, Jacob, however, took fresh cut branches from poplar, almond, and the plain trees and made white stripes on them by peeling the bark and exposing the white inner wood to the branches. Now, as the man was now taking care of this white flock, you know, purely white flock, the Lord gave him an idea. He told him now, the only way that you're going to succeed is to make sure that you have faith to believe. That every time these animals met, whatever they will be producing will be what you told Laban. It will, it will have what? Strikes, it will have stripes. It will be spotted. It will have all those things that you told Laban. So the man began to imagine, how can I do that? He decided to make something which is extraordinary. He went and he took what we are seeing, their branches from those trees. Then he peeled them and left the white to be seen and created a trough. A trough is where animals pass through when they are going to drink water. So that as they are passing there, he will make the, male, the female one to pass first and the male one will follow. You know, those are details which are not in the Bible. And then as they are passing there, you know what is going to happen. These animals, let's go to the next verse to explain because you might think Pastor Mlema is giving us stories. As they are crossing, he says, then he placed the peeled branches in all watering troughs so that they would be directly in front of the flocks when they come to drink. When the flocks were in the heat and came to drink, let's read on. He says, they mated in front of the branches and they bore young, the young that was streaked or speckled or spotted. Now, I want to ask you to go and do that experiment if you think it can work for you. Yeah, yeah, just go. Because this one now ngombes and buzis without color. And then you go and do that and see whether it will work. And I can, I can guarantee you, this was very unscientific. And it has never worked anywhere in the world. Never. What was it that was happening here? What was simply happening, and I want to explain this in a spiritual language. This man, Jacob, had... had he had the faith to believe. Now listen to me. He had the faith to believe that when these animals will be mating, this female animal will be looking where? On that, on that, that, those stripes that are on those trees. The male also will be looking on those stripes. And as they look, whatever will be coming from them will become striped. Now you ask Pastor Mulema, is it scientific? Does the seed become striped when you look? And I can tell you, no. The man was simply acting by faith to cause what he needed to come to pass. In other words, God gave him the wisdom for him to know he can use the eye of the animal to be able to reproduce what it sees inside the womb of that animal. What I've written in my notes here, I've said, Jacob employed selective breeding, breeding best chiefly on the expectation. The word expectation is very key here. And I will tell you what that expectation is here. He was simply expecting the expectation that embryos in the womb would be affected by what the pregnant animals set their eyes on. That was faith of the highest order. In other words, the man was calling things which are not as though they are. A faith which every believer, if you want God to stretch you beyond who you are, you must develop that faith that will be faith that calls things which are not as though they are. And this faith is summarized in the same, 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 same scripture reference that we read, where the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It means when God has said it, I can believe him for it. When God tells me, Mulema, you are healed, even when my body is refusing, hear me, even when my body doesn't want to come, you know, I can still believe God I am healed. And I can trust the Lord that because he has said it, I will trust him with all my heart that God has healed me. That is exactly what this man was, he was doing here. He was stretching his faith. This man was believing God that he would use his faith 
he would use his faith to transfer it into the animals and cause the animals to produce that which he believed was his rightful. You remember he had told Laban, when you come to my flock and you find any white one there, then you know I have stolen it. Now I want to imagine for the next five years that this man was with Laban, all the animals that Laban had, believe me, all these animals began giving birth to only the ones which were stripped. Is this stripped or striped? Striped, the ones which were spotted, the ones which were speckled. And as they grew older and older, these animals became weaker and weaker and they began to die. I'm imagining after five years, the flock of Laban, the flock of uh, Jacob, has become the flock that Laban had. And what Jacob never had is now what Laban is having. I will show you by scripture that even the sons of Laban went to him and they told him, Sir, Daddy, this man has taken away everything that you had. This man has stolen the wealth that you had. That's what triggered Jacob to leave that place and begin going back to the place where he had come from. Now, what are we learning from here? I'm simply learning from here that uh, God provided Jacob with the supernatural, and I'm calling it here supernatural, wisdom for him to be able to make good success. To signify to him for any miracle to take place. Because for us, sometimes we don't understand when we talk about miracles. We come to a place where we think that a miracle is anything that is natural. It isn't. Now, hear me right. Sometimes we reach a level where favor will cause miracles to happen in our lives. Really. You have no womb, but a child is born. That is favor. Are you getting me? You have no job, no papers, but you're given a job. I'm pausing for you to listen to me. Your, your, your people around you may appear better than you, but you find you are favored than anybody else. Why? Because it is something, the supernatural is something which is beyond the natural. It is not normal. I remember Jesus. I look at Jesus. And I see Jesus with his disciples. They are walking. The Bible tells me Jesus looks, somebody comes to him who is uh, blind, you know? What does Jesus do? He spits on the ground and he takes his spit, his spit with mud. Takes that one and applies it on the eyes of the blind man. I want you to try it in Nairobi today. How many of you will want me to do that? I'm sure, I'm sure by the time I'm done, you will think Pastor Mlema is mad. Even if you had that little faith, it will disappear. Puts it on the eyes of this man and tells him, you go and show yourself to the priest that you are healed. The man is still blind, but he's walking with spit on his face. You know, when he reaches there, the eyes open, and he comes back running saying, Jesus, I've been healed. I can tell you that was a miracle. It was something which was not normal, not, ne not, ne not necessarily normal. And sometimes God will use the abnormal things. Things when you look at and you wonder, why did this man take this route? And you don't even understand why he did that. The disciples during their time, somebody would come with a cloth, just a piece of paper, a cloth. And the disciple would take the piece of cloth and he would make, lay his hands on it and pray and tell him, you go and give it back to the owner. If this fellow was unwell, by just touching the cloth, the man would be healed. So some of us may try to duplicate these things. This is why you see in the church today, people have gone into buying oil, Others have gone into buying water, and they think these things will work for them. Let me tell you, unless the Lord gives you supernatural wisdom, it will not work for you. And many of these miracles are spontaneous. They don't just come because you are copying from what somebody else has done. I'm looking forward when God can speak to us in a very spontaneous manner. And without us even having a reference in scripture, he gets us to do something uncommon. And that uncommon thing produces results that will be good success. It reminds me of Jesus again. He's walking with his disciples and he sees a fig tree. You know about fig tree? The fig tree was not in season. That time, the Bible tells me the time he saw it, it was not the season of the fruit. Which means as God, he would have known that during this season, the fig tree doesn't produce fruit. But Jesus goes to the fig tree as though he's ex expecting fruit. He finds the fig tree, it is dry. And in the front of his disciples, he curses the fig tree. Says from today, no man should eat from you. Now, the following day, they are coming back. They find the fig tree dried up completely from the root all the way to the, to the leaves. And the disciples remember, they say, Jesus, yesterday when you passed here, you cast this fig tree. Jesus now tells them, yes, I did cast the fig tree. What was the lesson Jesus was teaching them? For me, I believe this. He was not doing it for the sake of just casting the fig tree. He wanted to teach his disciples what the uncommon can do. He was simply telling the disciples, even when it is not in season, when you demand, 
it will be as good as it is in season. Now listen to me. When things are not working for you, even when the economy is bad, the Lord can turn the economy in your favor. Ah, come on, you people, you're not listening to me. Are you, are, you not, are you listening to me? I gave an example when we bought this land, where the church is. Mama Nelly would remember this. And a few of us. Maybe Sister Naomi would. We got this land in 1999. That time the economy of Kenya was bad. Very bad. The time of Moi, just before he exited. Things were not working. IMF had refused to finance anything. Roads were becoming terrible. NSSF had gone to zero. Actually, they, they were bankrupt. This land, all the way from, from, from School of Aviation, coming all the way down to Donholm. All this land belonged to NSSF. And they, want, they had no money. They decided they're going to sell the land. It was as simple as you going to the office there and saying, I have money, and they give you land. Somebody called me and told me, Pastor Mlema, they're selling land in Tasia. We were in town. I didn't go to their office there. I came here, I found the surveyors here. And I said, I want part of this land. They asked me, how much do you have? You, I wanted to imagine. Our offering was 58 shillings or 58,000 shillings a month. That was our offering, total offering. And where we are meeting, we are paying 8,000 per Sunday. Help me here, those who do mathematics. How much do you remain with after four, after month, after four Sundays? How much? Come on, help me here. I'm trying to say this to give you an example. Maybe you're remaining with the two, three thousand shillings. In 1988, and this is the money we're using to carry the, the, the taxi for bringing in the equipments and running around. And they're asking us for six million here in this land. They're saying, look, if you give us 10% of value, you can take the land. We come back to the church and we declared, we said we are trusting God for that land. And by God's grace, in the midst of, the, the midst of depression, the Lord gave us the money we needed. A mortgage of about uh, 12 years mortgage here in this land, in this place. They couldn't even give us as a church because they didn't trust, the church didn't have collateral. So me and Pastor Simon, we said, we will take this land in our name. I picked the papers. We signed in our name, and we said, give us 12 pieces. We took, we took actually eight pieces from here. Went back to the church and told them we are buying this property for the church. And I never stood here at any point after we had done that purchase to tell anybody we were having a mortgage. Nobody ever had me mention mortgage. And believe me, in less than 10 years, we had paid off our mortgage. In fact, in less than eight years, we had paid off our mortgage. To signify to me, God sometimes uses recession. To bring you to the place where he can begin to minister to you and to bless you. So you should not be afraid of the things which are happening in your life. Am I encouraging somebody here? After eight years, we transferred this thing into, from our name and we gave it to GCI. To show us that God is a God who knows no season. He doesn't know the season. Look, somebody may tell you it will not work. But if you have faith in God, if you have faith in Jesus, it will work for you. So Jesus, expecting from this fig tree, even at a time when it didn't have, the Lord cast the fig tree. And the lesson was this. He would have simply gone to the fig tree and told it, fig tree, give me fruit. And believe me, immediately fruit would have come. But the lesson was simple. He turned to the disciples, if you can, look, you can turn with me, to the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. And this is what he told the disciples. Mark 11, 22 to 24. He said this, 22 to 24. Let's begin from... Yeah, he told his disciples, let's go together. He said what? Have faith. Okay, somebody wants me to go a little bit to verse 20. Okay, go to verse 20, my brother. For those who may not understand where we are coming from. He says, in the morning as they went along, he saw the fig tree withered from its roots. That's the following day. Then the Bible says, Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, he said, look, the fig tree you cast has withered. Now, this is the message Jesus wanted them to know. And this is the message that God is teaching us through Jacob. He said, have faith in God. In other words, trust in God. Some Bibles say, have the faith of God. Then the scripture says, Jesus answered. Verse 23. He said in verse 23. And please listen to verse 23. Truly I tell you. Can somebody say amen to that? He said, if anyone does what? Says to this mountain. Go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Are you listening to me? Now, I want to imagine you go to the mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro, and tell the Mount Kilimanjaro, Kilimanjaro, take yourself into the Indian Ocean. Kilimanjaro will uproot itself, 
and ran into the Indian nation. That's what he was saying here. Then verse 24, he qualified those words by saying this. Verse 24. 24. Therefore I tell you, ask, help me here. Whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe that what you have, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. This is what Jacob was doing. Jacob was simply extending his faith to believe in what he has said. And for that matter, he began to believe that as the cows or as the animals see those tracks, those animals will become his. And I want to let you know this. God will give you supernatural wisdom. I'm using the word supernatural what? Wisdom. To get things done in your life that no natural wisdom would have given to you. You can clap if you want to clap. I have 15 minutes to go. Let me give you three examples in the Bible of men who in Scripture have discovered God never did anything without doing, doing a supernatural thing. And by the way, any man in the Bible, anybody whom God has used, and I said this last Sunday, look at Abraham. He never became Abraham, we know, the rich Abraham, through natural means, never. Despite him, God telling him, come and I'll show you. Look at Jacob, look at Isaac. Never became the Isaac we know in the natural means. I'm not telling you the natural is bad. I'm telling you, he will use the natural to give you a supernatural plan. Look at Esther in the Bible. Esther was not a normal woman. She was, I mean, she was not an abnormal, she was not a superwoman. She was just a normal lady like some of us are seated here. But God used her in a very abnormal manner. When the time when she needed not to see the king, a point where she was saying, I die, if I die, or if I don't do what? I live. You know, you reach a point where you begin, you begin to do stupid things because it demands you do those stupid things. She said, I will walk in. Even if the king kills me, I have no issue. Look at men like Samson in the Bible. Look at men like uh, Gideon in the Bible. Look at people like David in the Bible. These are people whom God used supernatural things to turn their life, and, 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 and need their life around. But a good example I want to give you are three in scripture, just for us to reflect a little bit. I want to look at somebody like Abraham. Abraham never became the Abraham we know through any natural means. God calls him from the land of Haran, I mean Haran, and Abraham is in the land of Canaan. And immediately he gets there, the Bible says, and there breaks a famine. Huge famine. For many years, no food in the land. Then Abraham decides, I'll go down to Egypt to look for food. He gets into Egypt. And he's moving with a very beautiful lady. Her name was called who? Sarah. Again, I want to reiterate here. That house, the house of who? Who was the father of Abraham? He was called who? Not Terah, not... The house of Terah, yes. I believe that house was so blessed. It had the most beautiful women in the world. Sarah, Rebecca, and who? Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel. Same house. Very, very wonderful people. He's walking with his beautiful wife. And as they enter Egypt, everybody's looking. In fact, Sister jo Pastor Joyce, I came to realize... Actually, it's the people who commended the, wo the woman to Pharaoh. The people. Everybody looked at her and says, ah, this must be our queen. The one in the palace is not okay. <laughs> so they walk to Pharaoh and they tell Pharaoh, we have seen a woman with another man here. That woman is so fair. By the way, she was even taken to the palace for the king to look at her. But listen, before she goes to the king, you may not find this in the Bible, but I believe. Mimi na amini. That is the, the truth. Abraham must have found out, the, the king must have found out who is this woman. I have never seen any sensation on any woman in Kenya since I was born. That she's the best of all the women in this, in this country. But I'm imagining Sarah has shocked Israel, Egypt. Everybody's talking about her, Sarah. Okay? So the king looks and he says, can you find out who this woman is? And they, Abraham tells the, the lady when the, he, he understands inquiries are being made. He says, when they come and ask you who I am, tell him you are a who. You are who? My sister. Now let me ask you. Let me ask you. Was Abraham wrong? I know some of you are saying no because you had my sermon. Was Abraham wrong? A number of people, I preached it many years. I said Abraham was very stupid. How can Abraham cheat? How can Abraham mortgage his wife? It was not true. Actually, let me tell you the truth and hear me. Abraham took advantage of what was natural to make it Unnatural. 
Are you listening? He took advantage of who Sarah was to her. Sarah was truly Abraham's sister. She was the daughter of Abraham's brother. Are you hearing me? In those days, and don't use my, my sermon to go and harass your, your in-laws. Because I know some of you have very beautiful girls from where you are married. That, in those days, you were allowed. Actually, marriages were done within families. This is where you find Sarah, Sarah's sister, Rebecca's sister, or Sarah's brother, Rebecca's wife, I mean Rebecca's brother, they are all from the same family. You were allowed to, to marry your brother's daughter. It was allowed th those days. Not like today. Today, don't. And if you bring her here, where? Not today. <laughs> All right? For, for good reasons. So Sarah was a sister to Abraham. Real sister. But born of Abraham's brother. Okay? So Abraham realized now, if I say she's my sister, I'll not be wrong. I'll be right. But I will use that to save my life. And if anything happens, I want to believe God. That God will intervene for me. You didn't get my point here. Because supernatural wisdom is supernatural intervention. Supernatural wisdom is when wisdom intervenes in a situation that naturally would have fallen, but God raises it up. So he said, I will let them know she's my sister. I will not say beyond that. The wisdom is, I will only say she's my sister because she's my sister. Any other matter, let God intervene supernaturally. And God did it. He said, she's my sister. And when the king heard, she's my sister, what did the king do? People think the king just said, let her hear you, apana. The king was very discreet. Remember that the people who told him. The king must have said, mulete tumwone. Sarah akaenda akaonekana. King akasema, Abraham anangoja tu for intervention. King akasema, muite Abraham, muite aje, tuonge. Abraham was called. And the Abraham explained, she's my sister. The king told Abraham, give me the bride price. Now, if you are the one, you are Abraham, what would you ask? If Ruto called you and says, give me the bride, what will you do? I'm giving you him as an example. I'm sure you will look at the state house. You look at the cars running around there. And you will say, I want a VX. Especially you. You. <laughs> I want three VXs. I want what? Help me here. Please, please preach with me. I want what? I want a property where? In Karen. I want, I, want, I want you to, to give me, you know what I'm talking about. So much money. Abraham gave his price. Someone says here, he must have given the king the highest price to discourage the king. But the king paid. Paid everything. And told Abraham, after I paid this, Sarah will be my wife. Let her stay here. After I paid, Sarah will be my wife. And believe me, that very day, the Lord appeared to the king. After Abraham has been given horses, he has been given chariots. He has been given camels. He has been given. <laughs> now, if it is in, in Kenya, that day, the Lord appeared to president. Let me not mention his name. After he has given me 10 VXs. After he has given me 10 houses. After he has given me, help me here, a billion shillings. After he has given me literally everything I need, then the Lord tells the king overnight, don't touch that woman. She is somebody's wife. If it was you, what would you have done? Please help me here. What would you have done? Would you have been smiling all the way? I think you would have demanded back what, God, what you had given to me. But the Lord, because of what we call as what? Favor. The Lord spoke to the king and gave Abraham favor. The king woke up and he told Abra summoned Abraham and he said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Please, for, please. Don't allow this to happen to me. Told Abraham, all that I've given you, the horses, the chariots, all the, the men servants, the women servants, take them with you. Take everything with you. And the Bible says, and Abraham left that land a very... How many of you believe the Bible? Do you believe this Bible? When it says very, does it mean very? Or does it mean a little bit rich? I can see Abraham in a, in a VX. Mulema is driving to Kakamega in a VX. I've just mortgaged Nelly. And now we are moving, going to Kakamega in a VX. And God has intervened for me because of God's favor. He has given me everything I need for my future. Can I speak to you? May the Lord give you what you need. Amen. Not through any other means, but through extraordinary favor. Extraordinary favor. 
I have no time because my time is running out. I will give another example quickly, very quickly here. And I want to emphasize that because it's a similar kind of an example. The story of Isaac. Some of you don't know this. Isaac went through a similar story. Thank you for correcting me in the morning. It was now Abimelech, the king of Geral. It was called Abimelech. Same, same scenario. Again, Isaac, there is famine in the land. And Isaac, God tells Isaac, go to Geral and farm there and I will bless you. Don't go to Egypt, go to Geral. Geral was just a region within the, within the area. So the man goes to Geral. The, a place is completely dry. No water, no nothing. This is to encourage you. Even when things don't, look to, don't seem to work, favor will work for you. Come on, somebody. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, even the economy now, favor will work for you. It will. So he says, go to Geral. And Abraham goes, to, I mean, this gentleman, Isaac goes to Geral. And again, he has another woman called who? Rebecca. Very beautiful woman. Again, the people of Geral look at the woman and they recommend her to the king of Geral called who? Abimelech. So the king, before the king, before she's been recommended to the king, uh, Isaac tells her, when they ask you who I am, say I am who? Sister. Was he wrong? No. She had been married from the brother, the, the daughter of Abraham's brother. Okay? The same thing repeated itself. And again, God gives this man supernatural, supernatural blessings. Believe me. The king called him and he said, listen, why didn't you tell us she was your wife? Because the Lord told the king, if you touch her, you are also dead. And he says, Abraham, he says, if you had told us, one of us would have messed up with this woman. But because the Lord himself intervened in my, li in, 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 in my life, the king says, pray for me. And Isaac prayed for her. After Isaac had prayed for her, the king blessed Isaac. And again, Isaac leaves the land of Geral, a very rich man. What am I talking about? Favor. 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 I will not overemphasize. Let me tell you this. God will always give you supernatural. I'm not talking about natural. Supernatural. Please don't go and cheat your boss. Because these messages can, some, can sometimes be understood the way you want to understand them. Somebody will say, I will go and lie. I'm not talking about a lie. I'm saying if the Lord prompts you and gives you a way that, can, that is from him, that is supernaturally given by him, believe me, God can use that way to bring favor in your life. But make sure you trust in the Lord. All these characters were not doing it because they wanted to give their wives away. They had the faith to believe. Believe me. They had this faith to say, if I die, let me die. The Bible says, and I repeat again here, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own what? Understanding. Now, you will sin if you lean on your understanding. Your understanding will tell you, I will do like David. I will do like so and so. But when God prompts you, sometimes when God speaks to us certain impulses of things which may not even appear natural, but the Lord is speaking to us because we are following his direction and his movement. Believe me, miracles will begin to happen. Believe me. Believe me. You will go to the street and begin selling tomatoes and you are a graduate because the Lord has spoken to you, those tomatoes will turn into a supermarket. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Because the Lord has spoken. Finally, and I'm finishing with this one. The final one, which I love so much, before I give you my last scripture, is Israel when they were leaving the land of Canaan. I mean the land of Egypt. These men have been there in the wilderness of, the wilderness of Egypt for close to 430 years. You will agree with me, they were not just workers in Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt. Serving the Pharaoh and serving the people of Egypt. Very molested people. And after God raises Moses, for a number of times, I mean a number of months, I don't know how many months, Moses has been, has been preaching to Pharaoh and telling him, let my people go. And Pharaoh is not allowing them to go. Finally, God uses plagues. Ten plagues. I don't know how long they, how long they were spread over the year. Could have been a whole year of suffering. And there are now time that they are now living to go to the land which God has given to them. Me, I believe if I was an Egyptian, I would, that would have been really the saddest day in my life because I would have not wanted to see these Israelites. I would have not even wanted to bless them. Firstborns are dead. They have eaten, uh, tell me, the plagues. The first plague was what, if you can remember? The blood, they have drunk blood. They have eaten flies. They have eaten frogs. Eh? Boils have been on them. Firstborns have died. And these are the same people who are still here with us. And now the time has come for them to go. I would say, 
kwendeni. I was saying, mm, mm. But you know what? On the night of their departure, the night of their departure, the Lord tells the Israelites, go to your neighbors and borrow from them. The word was, borrow from them. Whatever you need from them, borrow. Ask them to give you whatever you need. I'm imagining I'm working in a boutique. And this boutique has all collections from Italy, from where? Sisters. From pa Paris, Turkey. And the, 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 the boutique is full of wonderful clothes, which... My, my good sisters here may, may love, or my good brothers here may love, Italian suits and whatever. And you're working there. You are the one who is actually arranging them, cleaning and sweeping because you are a slave there. Then that morning you appear to your boss and you tell him, sir, tomorrow we'll be going for a visit somewhere in Ivasha with our king, with our brother Moses, whom you know very well. And since we are leaving tomorrow, I'm asking you, can you give me just one suit, which I can put on because you've been re requested to be decent as we go. You know what would happen? The boss will tell you, no, 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 how many are you in your family? You say we have six. Of course, I told you last Sunday, when you don't have anything to do, you know what you do. You produce children carelessly, listen to you. <laughs> so you would actually say, look, we are about 15 of us in our home. The man would say, now, what I'm going to do is this, sir. This boutique, that day I'm closing. Take all the clothes in this boutique, go with them, share with your brothers and your sisters. Exchange the way you want. And once you are done with the, whatever you are doing, return them to the boutique. I know you people think, think they were asking for one dress. They were not asking for one dress. This is why, this why I believe in the wilderness for 40 years, these fellows were changing clothes every day. You only revelation. Yeah? So they got favor from this man. If you are working at, like I said earlier on, you're working in state house, you go and tell the Egyptian king there, you say, I need you to give me one limousine to go with. Then he says, no, take the whole fleet. Go with it, you'll return. That's why the Bible says, and Israel plundered. That's the scripture. They plundered Egypt. You believe the Bible? Some scriptures say they spoiled Egypt. It means they took everything that Pharaoh had. Some of them took chariots. Others took horses. Others took animals. Some of those men, they took clothes. They were given gold. They were given silver. And that night the Lord told Moses, Moses, out with everything which these people have. To tell us, God can take what you've worked for over the years and give it back to you. If you believe it, say amen. amen. He can take what you have worked for and give it back to you. Me, I have this belief in my heart. Whatever I have worked for, God will give it to me. And if he doesn't give it to me, he'll give it to my children. That, those are the examples that I see here. In conclusion, jo Jacob worked for only five years. Five years after Joseph had been born. And in those five years, all the wealth of Laban had already been transferred to him. The man was completely, a completely different man. That chapter 40, chapter, sorry, Genesis 30, verse 43. Re let's read this one. Genesis 30, 43. This is what the Bible says. It, 30, 43. I'm, with my, I'm within my time. 30, 43. And today I'll finish on time. Eh? It's telling me time up. I'm just done. In this way, is it 30, 43? It says in this way, the way I've explained here, the Bible says the man, what happened to the man? I can't hear you. The man did what? Grew how? How did he grow? Exceedingly how? Prosperous. And came to own, help me hear what? Large flocks and female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Jacob. Some versions say, they say, and he grew rich exceedingly. Exceedingly. To the point where the sons of Laban, when they saw him, they went to Laban and told Laban, Laban, look, we cannot have this man here anymore. He has taken what was yours. And he has, taken, he, he has given it to himself. I, in conclusion, want to tell you, and this, this is my reflection. There are times when the children of God need supernatural intervention in their lives. There are moments when you need God to interfere with the normal. Interfere with the natural. Interfere with the ordinary. For you to get to the place where God wants you to be. Because listen, everything that you have or anybody has is not his. He told him, now look and see. 
The man looked and he saw. Then he says, now arise and go and fulfill the vow that you made for me. To signify to me, it is God who gives you the power to have everything that you have. And this brings me to my last scripture, Genesis 8, verse 18, as we close now. Genesis 8, verse 18. This is what the Bible says. Genesis. No, sorry, Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. Thank you. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. My last scripture. It says this. Please, read with me. It says, and you shall remember the Lord your God. Why should you remember the Lord your God? Because it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Everything you have, God is the one who gives it to you. And he can give you, he can take from another and give it to you. And the reason for giving it to you is for you to establish the covenant that he made with our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you who is the seed of Abraham. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord establish you. Let's stand up on our feet as we close this service. Hallelujah.